Hello, so let's look at the monad or the monist. Now, this I've got a series going on about uh, on phallus, ben ben stones, betel stones. Uh, recent, just a previous upload. Well, this will connect. So, the monas and what is it? So, let's look at some of the heavyweights of the hermetic alchemical world: John D. and Afi Athanasius Kircher. So first, uh, John D. Very important, very mysterious character. He was a court astrologer and court astrologer to who? To Queen Elizabeth I. He was the one who advised her uh, to basically launch a war on the Spanish, uh, the, the Armada, which connects well to so many things. So this was the birth of of the British Empire in the end, essentially of the Spanish Empire and change the world. Now, he was the court astrologer, also an alchemist. <coughs> Pardon? He was also linked to the London Stone, which is the connection to these malariums, omphalus stones, Badal stones, ben-ben stones. But this is a... Uh, so there are, it's a very mysterious, very important stone. Uh, there's also a story that John Dee would take scrapings of his stone to use in his alchemical experiments, which brings us to what, what connected all the alchemist hermeticists? Geometry, Euclid, and he was he lectured on geometry in Euclid. He also wrote a preface for it. Now there we see, but well, he's one of the older frontispieces of them. And what's going on in this picture? Well, uh, amongst some other things, well, we have Strabo, uh, Hipparchus, but uh, focus on this portion here. And what do we have? So firstly, M-I-D. Well, John Johannes D. I-D. So Yoha now J is I. That the letters were different back in those days. Now, for instance, Cyclopedia by Abraham Rees. You can get this as a free download. Fantastic information in there because it goes back to 1819. Uh, and some stuff that's been written out of, out of the encyclopedias. Also... Uh, the different viewpoints of that day. Now, you can't, again, free downloads now, but what's interesting is uh, the way things were spelt different, okay? So, arced sector. F is S. Suspended. It's not fuff pended, it's suspended. So, if you read this portion, the pump was a sucking pump, six inches diameter in the barrel, and the length of the stroke was three feet. The weight was applied to the end beam on the crank wall. It had 144 cro uh, cogs, and interesting other things, um, especially the numbers and, and the science technology back at that day. But just as, you know, the pump was a sucking pump. Uh, but again, now back on that. So what, who do you have here now? I couldn't get the high resolution, but it's Mercurius. What is Mercurius? Mercury or Hermes. Hermes Trismegistus or Foth, the god of science, technology, weights and knowledge going back holding the caduceus, a symbol also of weights and measures. This is uh, Siena Cathedral in Italy, and so there we have it, and I've just included Hermes Mercurius Tresmegistus, Hermes Tresmegistus, which is Foth, the Emerald Tablet, gods of science and knowledge. Notice the snakes and uh, two snakes and two rods, but two snakes and one rod. What else do we have? Musica, astronomy. Geometry, arithmetic, this is the quadrivium, the four sciences of the seven liberal arts, the trivium plus the quadrivium, music, musica, astronomy, astronomy, geometry, which is the key of all of them all, and arithmetic or arithmetica, as was back in the day. This is Hermeticism. These are the, the seven liberal arts and then the quadrivium, this science that goes with it. But brings us to, back to John D. I D. Again, Johannes, Johannes D. John D. And this is the monad or the monas, which is, in, which was the symbol which he used and others have used. And it is a very tricky. So, uh, again, uh, where is it? Uh, Johannes D. The sun and the moon column. Notice the eggs as well. But again, we see this monad. This was his, or the monad. This was his symbol. And we see another representation of it here. It's hermetic. It's the caduceus. It's the, the uh, well, our, uh, the quadrivium and links to it. Uh, he was a Renaissance Neoplatonist. Now we have uh, Pythagorean schools. We also have Platonic schools. 
when they connect through it, but he was a hematicist, a geometrician, he studied and lectured on Euclid, mathematician, astronomer, astrologer, also a diviner. And there we see his monas, or the monad. Uh, this is a picture from The Chemical Wedding by Kristen Rosenkrauts. And what do we have? The monad. Now also notice the cup, but also the circle with a dot in the center, which is an important feature will come later. He was uh, important. So it, the Americas, Hermeticism and Alchemy was introduced by John Winthrope Jr., who also used the monas as his symbol. Uh, also connections to the inner temple back in uh, old London, the city of London. Uh, John Dee and Edward Kelly were also famous for conjuring spirits, so very much into, well, conjuring, divining. Uh, John Dee, here we see one of his plates. And even on the illustration you can see, because these things, see, even his finger is pointing to it. They, they, they always put lots of well, the compass, okay but also his finger pointing to it these paintings and all, they really knew what they were doing now alchemy even in the background and now he's showing actually the seven liberal arts of a quadrivium there in the background these paintings have knowledge embedded in them uh, john d and edward kelly were famous for enochian magic which goes back to the bible and the magic of solomon now enochian magic was let's just say resurrected or might, might even say perverted by Alistair Crowley and uh, Ch Charles Stansfeld aka Frater um, Akkad or Achad and uh, that whole Alistair Crowley thing but Enochian magic Enoch the Bible but also uh, Solomon so for instance this uh, is at the, the Psalms but uh, a large part of the Old Testament is basically spell books and this was John Dee especially uh, was very heavily involved in that. So we see the seal of God, so the pentagram, and then we see the seven-pointed star, and also his talisman, which is an important feature in his astrology. Um, Athanasius Kirchhoff is polymath, wrote really, really a lot of books, uh, um, and a Jesuit, IHS. And he also wrote uh, Oedipus Egyptiarchus, his early work on... Egyptology, where he references Strabo, Manifo, and and others, and uh, they're the king, scepter and orb held by the king, the measure, the ruler, and the weight. Uh, this is from Egyptiarchus. Here we see Isis with a sistrum. Okay, uh, Isis remember, with the F, uh, Minerva, Venus. Now, uh, the pale P. Now, what's it? Fecundus uh, basically means the fertility symbol of irrigation. And so you'll often see that, uh, the handbags or the buckets held by these ancients. Well, what were the cultures famous for? Irrigation and other things. Uh, also, this is from Egyptiarchus. Notice the Uruburus and, again, these alchemical symbols. The sun and the moon references in there as well. So, uh, the Orient to the East, notice it's pointed to the West side. The Occident, the West, is pointed to the Eastern side. Auster, Austria, or Australia, Aus is South, pointed to the North, and Boreas, as in Borealis, the Boreal Winds, that's pointed to... Now, that's one of the things that goes on with these guys. Now, um, so Athanasius... Okay, this is also from Egy uh, Oedipus Egyptiarchus. Uh, the scarab, uh, well, as astronomical symbols there. You even see the, the zodiac around the outside, as well as the seven planets, which refer to seven elements as well. And notice these, well, note, so for Monas by John D. see the little hooks at the bottom. Here we see the Athanasius Kircher version with the snakes there at the bottom. Astronomy, and even so that circle, with a dot at the center, that's what's going on in there as well. This is a more detailed version by Kirscher. So the, uh, this will come back. What is the card number one of the tarot, the magician? And one will be important. Well, we have uh, fire, wind, war, uh, earth, wind. So f that's the fire symbol. We also have the clouds, sky, wind, and water symbols. Water and uh, the wind or the air. But the earth itself here, which don't have a click, so we have the four elements, earth, fire, wind, and water. We also have the monad, the monasphere, and the caduceus. Notice also the uh, 
zodiac signs. But again, back to Rosenkraut's um, alchemical wedding. The dot with the circle. And again, the monas or the monas with the cup. This will come back. So there we see the same symbols repeated. Cross traditions, Kersha. Now also uh, George Agricola or George Bauer. Bauer, uh, yeah, okay, that's a whole thing going on with the banking history system. So, but anyway, back to the breakdown here of the monas, the sun, the moon, the elements, and fire. So that's uh, Ignis, Elementa, Sol, as in solar, the sun, and Luna, the moon. Uh, now, that's the important symbol of the monad. Now, uh, one book full of symbolism, really clever, really clever uh, amongst other, so, so many movies, artists, and others embed these stuff in there. You know, obviously they've learned it somewhere or, it, or it's built into our DNA. But either way, Dr. Manhattan, what does he have? He has the monad. It's also a symbol for hydrogen, element one, which brings us back, remember the... Uh, the magician card number one and the connections there and so number one was very important especially to the Platonists they worshipped one so it was a symbol for hydrogen element one on the periodic table hydrogen what is the Sun consist of hydrogen Pythagoreans and monad represented one singularity alone or the origin point uh, so Everything emerge well, even in a literal sense, everything does emerge from one. Now, what's important about the number one? Well, think about it one plus one equals two. You add them together, it gets bigger. One times one equals one, it stays the same. It's almost like it's a rock star. One does not want to multiply, one is on its own and it's separate. Um, so, any other number, if you add it, so for instance, three plus three is six. 3 times 3 is 9. Multiplications are always larger. Now, the only exception to that is the number 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. So, four, uh, 2 is sort of like equal, but 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. There's this weird... Okay. Neoplatonics, Pythagoreans, the representation, why 1, 2, and certain numbers represent that. Well, that's an interesting point. Symbol for hydrogen, Gottfried Leibniz, which was a famous geometer, uh, geom geometrician, mathematician, and also very esoteric, very, very occult, as in hidden knowledge. He referred to the monad, or one, as the elementary particle. Uh, prima materia, in a way. What is water? Prima materia. It is hydrogen. H2O, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. Elementary particle, that's the prima material of a primary material for the older alchemist schools. Hydrogen, the sun, the origin point, the number one, and embedded in here. Now, uh, Corpus Hermetica, which was one of the, uh, the bodies of knowledge which really created a birth, the rebirth, cr led to the Renaissance. That is also the cornucopia. This, these guys have written, you know, they've written their symbols importantly, but Corpus Hermetica, monad is the cup. We have a moment, monad, the circle and the dot. Also the more hermetic theme, where we have the... Uh, but also above the cup, sun and moon, as well as the other elements uh, embedded in there. They're very, very, very clever. Oh, now I forgot about that one. I should have added that one. Athanasius Kirscher, one of his frontispieces, where you have an eagle, double-headed eagle. And on the other side, you have the fleur-de-lis, which blends into the hexagon or the hexagram. Uh, yeah, okay. Now back to the monad because I've pointed this out in the on phallus uh, symbols and how this connects. So you have the monad, and there we have the Athanasius Kirscher from Oedipus Egyptiaca. Uh, the Vortrek Ammonia Gerard Modique. We have 32 points around the outside representing the double chevron, the water symbol. And on December 16th, through the roof. A sunbeam shines down, illuminates the Ben Ben stone or the cenotaph, which represents a symbolic rebirth. This is not on adding, this is, he says this, he'll tell you, you know, this is part of the, uh, the original Vortrekker was so Egyptian they had to change it, but that also, because he based the Vortrekker on the Huat Ben Ben, the mansions of the Ben Ben, and what do we have? The symbol of Aten and the sun and rebirth. And that's the stuff that's going on with these guys, and it's, uh, it's a lovely, it's a symbol, it's knowledge, it's information. Have a good one.